Okay. Go ahead. Okay, today is February 14, 2021. And time just fly. And we have one month, one month and a half passed for 2021. Uh, so we should really work hard and try to be okay. Uh, enjoy our our earthly life here and try to be with our Lord to be His uh, light, be light and salt. Okay, that today's Bible verse of the week is Hebrew nine twenty seven to twenty eight. Hebrew 来说，第九章二十七到二十八节。Let us all read together. Okay. Just as man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. C 伯来书第九章二十七到二十八节，按着定命，人人都有一死，死后却有审判。像这样，基督既然一次被献，担当了许多人的罪，将来要向那等候他的人第二次显现，并与罪无关，乃是为拯救他们。Okay, I'll read in Taiwanese. 按照命定，人人拢有一死，死后阁有审判，就是像安尼，基督既然一边被献献祭，担当了真侪人的罪过，将来伊要去向下听候伊的人第二摆显现，甲罪无关系，乃是为了拯救因大家。May God bless His own word. Let us meditate on the word. So you know, do it. Yeah.
call to worship, shout for joy to God, all the earth, sing the glory of his name, make his praise glorious, say to God, how awesome are your deeds, so great is your power, that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. 全地拢要爱向上帝欢呼，唱歌俄罗伊的音乐，用俄罗的言语将伊的音乐发明出来，就对上帝讲：你的作为何等可畏！因你的大能，受得拢要爱向你投降。全地要敬拜你，歌颂你，要用要歌颂你的名。呃、uh, ，We have Sister Su Mei is leading us to praise. Su Mei. Yeah. 这条伊是主。伊是主，伊是主，伊对世界我追求，属我的主。我的脚跪拜，我的嘴声扬，耶稣基督是主。He is God, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead and He is the Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the 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 Lord. 哎，一幕，迄字幕无出来啊。第二条，伊互我欢喜。Yeah, pastor。字幕我有看到嘞，我我我有看到。你有看到？ Yeah. 我家己无看到，咱、yeah. 里头无看到。无，现在你得去。第二条，伊互我欢喜。我要欢喜，迎娶进入你的门；我要好路，进入你的殿。我要欢喜，出声呼噜伊的名，感谢伊听唱大无比。伊予我欢喜，伊予我迎娶，我要好路，进入你，欢喜来迎娶，伊予我欢喜。你予我吟诗，好多伊听唱大无比。I will enter his gate with the thanksgiving. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this in the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will be joyful. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will be joyful. He has made me glad. 我要欢喜，迎娶进入你的门；我要哀乐，进入你的殿。我要欢喜，出声呼噜伊的名，感谢伊听唱大无比。伊予我欢喜，伊予我吟诗，我要呼噜感谢，欢喜来吟诗。伊予我欢喜，伊予我吟诗，呼噜伊听唱大无比。OK， 拉索安，亚索转向你，亚索转向你，亚索转向你，亚索转向你，转向你，亚索转向你，亚索转向你
Okay, uh, thank you, Sister Sume, and let's run, uh, bow our head to pray, and, uh, and then we will recite our Lord's Prayer. Okay, let's uh, have a silence prayer, and then I'll, I'll con continue with, with the corporate prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather today in your name to worship you and praise you, may you be exalted, may our worship be holy and pleasing to you. We thank you that you send your uh, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, so that we can be saved, can be reconciled with you. And we pray that you fill our hearts and in our mind and our soul to its full measure. Dear Jesus, we confess our sins. And uh, you die for us. You got pierced and nailed on the cross. So we, we can be uh, rescued, saved. And uh, that the uh, the punishment that brought us the peace and also uh, your wound that heal all of us. Now we, now we can call our Heavenly Father, Abba Father again. We deeply indebted to you. And Lord, may your humility and your gentleness, your patience, your love, which is so deep, so high, so wide, and so long. May they be rooted in, in us so we can be your disciple, <clears throat> obey your commands, and to love you and to love one another and our neighbors, and to be the light and salt of this world. Please grant us the unity of spirit, and uh, let us not grieve the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, We've been undertaking this pastoral search as Pastor Cohen will be retiring at the end of June. We thank you that you let all the co-workers be able with the search committee be work in such harmony and unison and uh, set one minded. Yeah, we have different opinions and we have debate sharing, but all we can come at the end we'll come out with the same uh, same agreements unanimously, and uh, we pray for pray you for that. Uh, as we continue our search process, uh, please be 
with all of us, guide our our mind, our soul, and our heart. And uh, so we can continue work and find uh, uh, through our work. And you, we, we strong, we have this faith that you will be sending the best people that match our need. Uh, you will call the, your servant to come to serve us, to lead the sheep. Uh, so we won't, we won't go astray. 现在上帝，我那今日为着这个正义兄来献上祈祷，主啊，你个安慰、恩惠、安慰因安尼、因家属。虽然这是短暂的啊分开，但是因为该亲人过身，这点嘛是拢个伤心的代志。啊，主啊，请你来安慰因。啊，因拢因正义兄也给阮真大真好个见证，以足好个基督徒啊，一生拢来侍奉你。啊，我们该有心，该动工，所以我们感谢你，你继续来，来来来，该得的，啊，好一点，你住来的，你当得到安息，啊。Dear Lord, you also know our needs, and、uh, because you are Jehovah Jireh, you will provide everything we need, all the financial needs, all the spiritual needs, all the Physical needs, you are the provider. We are, we are sure that you will be providing us. And、uh, now we are praying for.、Um, we thank you, Lord, that you, you, you sort of let the、uh, sister, sister, two duties, her brother's operation go smoothly. Now he is in the recovery stage. Uh, please give him、uh, fully recover recovery, and have a health body, and able to、uh, to live out your witness for you again. Because we know we know that they are very devoted Christians. They love you. They trust you. And we also pray for Olivia, who who has、uh, had those, all the injections and the two doses already. And、uh, no side effect. We pray for that.、Uh, there are many like Pastor Colin and the、uh, brother Judy and、uh, brother Tom and the、uh, sister Judy and、uh, also、uh, Jipo and the、uh, by her. They all has the 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 vaccination done, and、uh, we pray for that. Pray that the the vaccination work work in their body and to produce the antigens and uh, uh, keep the COVID. Uh, virus away, and we also pray for you as this nation is working try to vaccinate more, all the people. Please, that give us patience and give uh, give uh, your mighty hand be with this nation and guide all the process be a fair and just process. Please also give us the、uh, the, the sympathetic heart for some of the nations we don't have the resource to do that.、Uh, Whether we can have, I mean, this nation can provide some, some, some support in that in that area. Lord, we have a new president, <coughs> Biden.、Uh, he is trying to do his best. Please be with him.、Uh, that your spirit, your, your spirit guide him. Yeah, yeah, and、uh, try to heal this nation. So,、uh, so this country no. What the, there's a dark force, there's enemy、uh, hovering, and、uh, let everybody be united and be be on guard, be on watch. Yeah. And uh, and uh, dear God, please anoint Pastor Collins' tongue, and、uh, while he preach,、uh, his word can pin penetrating us. He convey the message you want to tell us. Clean our ear. Clean our heart, so we can hear all your 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 message, and、uh, we can go on、uh, engraved on our in our heart, and we can go and do it, and、uh, be a light and salt of our neighbors, our friends.、Um, please be with all our brothers and sisters, and guide us for the spiritual growth, and also as we aged. 
but we our spirit can spirit can grow uh, to the to your full measure. Uh, I pray all this in your holy name. Let's recite the uh, Lord's prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay. And uh, now we have, a, even though we don't have an official auditor, but I think that uh, uh, we would like to have Serena to play La Awasi because the offertory, the giving is part of the offertory to God. Okay? Uh, we can offer our heart, our mind, and our soul and uh, to our God to worship him because our, our, self is, our sacrifice will be the living sacrifice, will be the worship to him. Serena, please. Okay, thank you, Therina. That was really, really nice. Our next is the open worship. Okay. The open worship is that if anybody who is touched, okay, basically, the I said, Brother Mike didn't know it's just, it is for everybody. Okay. Uh, so if you are touched, you have something to share, uh, okay, please uh, use this, this time. Uh, it will be just a, uh, but don't, don't be long. Okay? Just a short, whatever touch your heart, and show it to share with our brothers and sisters. Thank you, everybody. Pray for my brother. He is uh, supposed to wake up, but right now he cannot uh, eat. So just uh, do op another operation for that. <laughs> operation for the wake one, huh? I want the food to stomach. So it's more hard to recover. So please, everybody pray for him and uh, for the uh, recover. And, yes. Uh, right now, after uh, if if the recover go back to home, need uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> nurse and uh, uh, some very hard procedure for artificial feeling. Thank you. 
Yeah, I, I would like to share uh, that uh, I'm members of the search committee, pastor search committee. And uh, I think throughout this uh, search process, I can say that a lot of us, most of us, all of us has an has encounter with God. I think that we are also growth in our spirit and our, our understanding of his will. And uh, as we continue search for the, our next pastor, uh, and also we all have confidence that God will provide the best one for us to lead this church. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, uh, uh, and I feel that, yes, I think there really is a, it is a new experience for all of us. And we have some potential candidates okay, uh, come about and we are in this process of contact and, uh, and the convey communication. So just to let you know, uh, may, may please all pray for, for our search. Okay? Everybody did come. So earnestly pray for our search. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. Amen. Okay, if not, okay, when well, there's no more, and let's move on to the next one. That'll be a scripture reading. Okay. Uh, today's scripture reading is from Luke 12, 35 to 40. Luke 12, 35 to 40. Be, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants who, whose master finds they them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth. He will dress himself to serve will have them reclined at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for the servant whose masters find them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house has known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. Verse 40, you also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Okay, today's pastor's message is prepare for arrival, be ready. Pastor? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, this is, I'm going ahead and mute everybody right now, just so that uh, you won't uh, unexpectedly. Uh, oh, let's see. And so today we'll be continuing our service uh, of preparing for his arrival. Uh, trying to do a couple different things here. So there we go. So about being ready. And uh, we have, uh, there we go. <laughs> We've been looking the last three weeks uh, about preparing for his arrival. We know that Jesus is coming back. He told us he's coming back and he said, be ready. And the passage that Mike just read is another account of Jesus saying, be ready. You don't know when I'm coming. Be ready. You know, uh, there's sometimes I don't want to wake up. I, I have to admit, this morning I woke up about six. I knew my alarm was set for seven. I rolled back over and waited for seven o'clock. I didn't jump out of bed at six o'clock. 
when I was in school, uh, often my mother would uh, call me to get up more than once because I wasn't excited about going to school. Uh, you know, there was maybe a, a test or something and I was a teenager and I just wanted to sleep. And, you know, and she would say, get up, you got to get ready. The bus is coming. You've got to get ready. But you know what? On Christmas morning, my parents never, ever once had to told me, get out of bed. Never once. We, my brothers and I, were always awake before my parents. See, underneath the tree in our house, the way it would work, there would be presents underneath the tree. There'd be wrapped presents, and they would appear during the week before Christmas. But on Christmas Eve, there would be added some more presents from Santa Claus. And in our house, these tended to be some of the bigger presents, and they were unwrapped. They were just placed out. So when you got up in the morning, you got to see what they were. And so we would get up in the morning, early in the morning, and go out and look underneath the tray. I found out later, my mother told me those, those presents from Santa Claus were actually from my grandparents. But we wanted to see what was there. There was an anticipation. We wanted to get up. That should be our attitude about Jesus coming. When we receive eternal life through Christ, then we don't look at his coming with a sense of dread. Oh no, the teacher's giving a test today. I don't want to get out of bed because I'm going to have to go have this exam or some difficult thing. No, instead we eagerly await his coming. We're looking for his coming because we have been adopted into his family. You know, Teresa's been gone for a couple of weeks. She's been in Michigan. And so today, my Valentine is coming home. And I am anticipating her coming home. I will be watching for her, partly because I need to clean the kitchen floor before she gets here. Because I've needed to do that for a week and I haven't done it. And that's part of what Jesus is talking about here too, isn't it? Preparing for his arrival, being ready is not simply watching for him, but being ready. Romans 8.23 says this, We ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we eagerly await or eagerly wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. You know, as you get older, and I know several of you can, uh, can testify about this, this redemption of our bodies becomes a bigger theme because these bodies have aches and pains and they don't process things right. And you eat some things and they don't agree with you and your knees hurt and your shoulders and you know how it goes. And as the time goes on, we eagerly await for Jesus to come because we know that we've been adopted into his family and that we will have new bodies when he comes. So when we look for the coming of the Lord, we anticipate his coming. And I'm tempted to go back over to the, uh, the slides and show you. Cheap one does such a good job, but eh, it just gives the scripture references. So you'll be all right. The next reference is in Romans chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Wake up. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. So we talked about two weeks ago, making sure that you clean up, that we've been baptized and that we've been purified by the spirit, that we've been cleansed from our sins and forgiven, that we have eternal life and that we have appropriated 
the righteousness of Christ, and we do the good deeds, which is the linen that has been given to the church to wear, that we'd be bright and clean, that we'd be dressed. So we put on God's armor, we put on the armor of light, because we don't know when he's coming, but we know it's closer today than it was yesterday, right? It's closer today than when you first believed. Again, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and purify for himself a people that are very uh, his very own, eager to do what is good. So we are waiting for this blessed hope. We're eagerly anticipating his coming. We are looking for him to come. We're looking for the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. (laughs) And while we're waiting, we're told here that the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and that we should live lives that are good, that we should be eager to do what is good. Since we don't know when Jesus is coming, we're told that we need to watch for his coming. Now, I've got an app on my telephone, uh, that on my smartphone. It's called Life360. I'll give them a plug. I think it works pretty good. It lets me know where James has been. It's on his phone. We can say, oh, yep, he got to work okay. And it's on my phone. Teresa was able to say, well, where's Brian at today? When I was working with Empire, she never knew. I was all over the place. She could look at that. She said, well, he's up in Mentor. Or he's down in, in, in Mansfield, and he won't be home for a while. Today, I'll be checking Life 360 because it'll tell me where Teresa is on the road. I don't know exactly what time she'll be home. But I have some idea because I'll watch. I'll look for her coming. And we need to do the same for Jesus. So listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 through 44, he says this. But about that day and hour, no one knows. And he's talking about the time of his coming. The day, we don't know what day he's coming. and We definitely don't know what time. Not even the angels in heaven know, nor the son, but only the father. Verse 37. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the son of man. For in the days of Noah, for in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill. One will be taken. The other left. So Jesus is saying, my coming is going to be like the time when the flood came. The end of time is going to come like that. We're told that Noah was warning people. He was building the ark. He was building the ark for years. And then the day came. God said, go into the ark. And God shut the door. But what was going on in the world? Well, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. In other words, life was going on like it always does. Oh, there's all kinds of changes. There's wars and rumors of wars. Jesus talks about that in Matthew chapter 14 or 24, Matthew chapter 24. He talks about the wars and rumors of wars and there's pandemics. And we know about that, right? And forest fires and all the kinds of things that happen in life keeps going back and forth but it keeps going on. We get up, we go to the grocery store, we get our food, we eat, people are getting married. You know, life is going on. And that's what Jesus said. 
the time of his coming, it's going to be just normal business as usual. We don't know when he's coming, so we need to watch. That's why he says in verse 42, he goes on to say, therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know on what day our Lord will come. Your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at the time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So also you must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Here, listen. We don't know the day or the hour he's coming, but one thing we're told right here, what Jesus says is, I'm going to come when life is going on like normal, and I'm coming in that hour when you don't expect me. That could be right now then, right? Most of us think we've got to get up and do what we need to do tomorrow. It's going to work, getting a doctor's appointment, whatever we got planned, because we expect to be here. It's in that hour that we don't expect him that Jesus is going to come. Therefore, we need to keep watch. Mark chapter 13. Mark gives his take on the same, same thought. But in the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the sons, but only the Father. He's quoting Jesus again. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not, not you do not know what time. <laughs> let me try that again. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells each one at the door, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back whether in the evening, at midnight, or when the rooster crows at the dawn. It will come suddenly. Do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. We're supposed to stay alert. We're supposed to be watching. <laughs> my, uh, my wife tells about when they were kids. They all had they all had assigned tasks after school. There were certain household chores that they had to get done. And many times when they came home, they didn't do the chores that they were supposed to do until the very last minute. And one of the kids was to stand by the window and watch for her father's car. Because they're busy trying to get done what they need to get done. And they would call it a space race. They would rush. And she said, sometimes when they didn't have the living room completely cleaned, things got thrown underneath the couch just so dad couldn't see them. They take care of them later. So we're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be watching, but we need to be prepared. Paul writes to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. It'll, he'll come when you don't expect him. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Just like Jesus said, in the times of Noah, things are going, people are going to say peace and safety, and God's going to say, okay, that's it. But you, brothers and sisters... Now listen to this carefully. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. Jesus is coming back like a thief, and it'll be a surprise for those who are not ready. But for those who are anticipating his arrival and are watching for his arrival, it won't be a surprise to them. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Revelation 16, 15 says, these are the words of Jesus. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed 
is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Jesus saying, I'm coming when you're unexpecting. Blessed is the one who remains awake and stays closed. That was last week's sermon, wasn't it? So that you're not going to be ashamed at his coming. So we anticipate his coming. We're watching for his coming. Why? So that we will be ready when he comes, right? That's the whole idea. It's so that we will be ready. I saw a, a bumper sticker Sticker said, Jesus is coming. Look busy. Uh -uh. No, not at all. Jesus is coming. Be ready. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Jesus tells the story about these 10 young women. And they're waiting for the bridegroom. And they've got their lamps because it's late into the night. And 10 of the 10, five had extra oil for their lamps. They thought ahead. They were prepared to wait. And five were called foolish virgins or foolish young women. They had their lamps, but they didn't have extra oil. And we're told that the virgins woke up. They all fell asleep. Verse 7, they woke up, they trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there will not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were not ready went in with him. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the ones, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Here's the point, verse 13. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. See, if God wanted us to know when he was coming back, he would tell us. He doesn't want us to know because he wants us to remain ready. He doesn't want us to wait, wait till the last minute. Listen, we need to be ready for Jesus to come. And here, just like in the days of Noah, when God told Noah to go in the ark, he shut the door and nobody else was going in. There is a time when Jesus comes back and the door is shut. You're either inside with him or you're not. This is a theme that Jesus shares again and again in the Gospels, and it's shared throughout the New Testament, that we need to all be ready. Luke chapter 12, verse 35 to 40. Be dressed and ready for service. This is the passage that Mike read at the beginning. Be dressed and ready for service. Well, I could re-preach last week's sermon, right? Because that's important. Doing good works. Doing the right things. Doing what God called us to do. And keep your lamps burning. Shine for him. Let your good works shine before men that they might glorify your Father in heaven. Like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet. So that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. So it's like when, when James is going to work, he gets a ride to doggy daycare and he sits on the porch. He's got his lunch ready. He's got his coat on. He's got his shoes on. So when the ride pulls into the driveway, they don't have to honk the horn. They don't have to say, we're here. Come on out. James, most of the times, James is ready to go. There have been some times when he's still waiting, but still getting ready. But most of the time, James is dressed and ready to go. They pull in and out the door he goes. He loves going to see the dogs at doggy daycare. It's not a problem getting him to go to work. The same way here, we need to be dressed and ready to go so that when he comes, we're ready to go with him. 
And it says in verse 37, it would be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve and will have them recline at the table and will come wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known when, what hour the thief was coming, he would not let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. How many times can that be said again and again that you don't know when Jesus is coming? You better be ready. He's coming like a thief in the night. So we anticipate his return. We watch for his return so that we are ready. So Jesus is coming. So how do we prepare? How do we get ready for Jesus to come? Well, two weeks ago, we talked about make sure you're cleaned up. Have you received Jesus as your Savior? Have you asked him to forgive your sins? Have you come to him and accepted him as Lord and Savior? Have you demonstrated that in baptism? Have you continually come to him so that he would keep you clean? If not, do that today. Then make sure you're dressed. You've got to have on the clothes. Make sure you have the undergarments, those, those bright white linens of righteousness that Jesus has given for us to wear. Don't come into the wedding banquet unless you're properly clothed. And then put on the armor of light, the full armor of God, so that when the evil day comes, you may be able to stand. And having done everything, stand. And then watch. Be ready to go so that when Jesus comes, you'll be ready. Father, pray for each one that's on this Zoom meeting and any who might be watching through Facebook now or in the future, that you'd help them understand how much you love them. And that it's not a threat, but it's a promise that you're coming to redeem us, to bring us home, and we anticipate your coming. For anyone that's listening to this, Lord, that dreads the thought of your coming, we pray that you would help them to know how much you love them and that they would receive you as Savior and Lord and that they might receive life in Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help each of us to be serving you, to be ready for when you come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that each of you would experience the fullness of his love, that you'd know his cleansing power, that you'd have the full armor of God, and that you'd be ready when he comes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And as you listen to this today, and as you have uh, worked through this, um, if you have questions about what it means to receive Christ as your Savior, or if you understand that but you're ready and you want to make a public testimony of that, would you just reach out to me? And let me know that, uh, that you're ready. Or if you have questions, I'd be glad to talk with you. Mike? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for your uh, another strong message. Okay, so welcome, everybody. Uh, we can worship together. That is so blessed. Okay, and uh, there's a if you we don't want to put it in 
hand out, but I mean, you, if you saw, go to the old one, the, the one that we just released on uh, Wednesday, uh, I just report that, okay. Our weekly Zoom prayer meeting meet at 7 p.m. And uh, so every Tuesday, so you can join us. That'll be great. And uh, on February 23rd, uh, there will be an AC meeting uh, to discuss about uh, the course of action for our church worship service. Whether you want to go back to the church or you want to remain on Zoom. Okay? Please pray for God's guidance in our decision. And uh, regarding pastor, pastoral search, uh, you know any anyone you think that is suitable for our church, please give the context to the information to any members of pastoral service, uh, search committee. Uh, and uh, oh, we were very fortunate, to, lucky to have doc, Dr. Tim, Tim, Tiffany Liu as the daughter of Sister Tammy. Uh, as our speaker for our first community service meeting. Okay, and uh, it was uh, on last Monday, and uh, she spoke on the role of a podiatrist in community care, okay, common uh, podiatric conditions. And it really is an eye-opener. I We noticed that uh, Tiffany has grown to be a very, such a mature and uh, confident lady. And his talk, her talk was uh, superb. Okay? And uh, you, you can uh, see it on, on the, based on the link the pastor sent out. Okay? Uh, so, and these are all the effort by Sister Tammy. Okay? Uh, thank you. Uh, there's a couple of prayer requests that uh, the search committee requests you to pray uh, earnestly for God to send us a, a right pastor okay, to be called by by, by God. Okay? And uh, so we will have a smooth transition. Uh, then the, I already pray in my prayer that uh, uh, Judy's brother, Dr. Nadano Chai, uh, heart surgery was a success. Okay? And now he is recuperating and uh, in ICU, and so may God grant him a speedy recovery. Uh, and the Sister Teresa, as Pastor mentioned, that is on the way back, will be coming back uh, today, and uh, in time for the Valentine Day. Congratulations, <laughs> congratulations, Pastor. <laughs> and. Uh, so uh, the Valentine Day, Valentine Day is coming. Eh? Is, is it today or tomorrow? You know? Today. Today. Okay. And uh, uh, pray, uh, pray for the health of all the members of our church, Body of Christ. Some are in in uh, remote uh, and uh, and to get the uh, vaccinations and everything. And uh, this uh, this thing this thing is that uh, James, Chipo, and Tom. And Sister Iho and Judy, Olivia Lynn, and Pastor Cohen has has been has got the first dose. Anyone else? No. Okay. So uh, we we will, we will get it gradually. Okay. Uh, so the last one is uh, let's continue pray all the for okay for the for the. Pastor Howard Moore, Russell Jeans, and Benjamin Fang, and uh, Margaret Mosher, and pray for those who are dwelling outside. Okay, out, not with, can connect with us and remotely, but they are out of town. Okay? May they may God, so okay. Uh, uh, bless them and keep them healthy. Okay, another thing I want to correct is that for the next week duty, okay, uh, is somewhat a uh, mess up. Next week, uh, the song leader will be Teresa. Okay? Yeah, and uh, the worship leader is Simon, and pianist is Olivia. Okay, so now you have any questions, let me know. Is there any, anything else anybody want to uh, add?
Okay. If not, maybe we can we can stay later and and for chit chat. But then come down now. We have a uh, Serena to give us the post loop. Thank you, Serena. Well, we're going to end our Facebook feed, uh, but we'll continue with uh, the Zoom so that people can share with one another.